morning, Revivers. And happy Father's Day to all the amazing fathers out there. If this is your first time visiting for in-person service or our Facebook Live service, Pastor Paul, Lady Shannon, and the RCMI family welcomes you and thank you for joining us today. RCMI family, these are your announcements for the week of June 19th, 2022. The cafe is closed for the rest of this month. We are restructuring and in need of help to continue our cafe services. Please see Steve Champion or Deacon Johnson if you are interested in cooking or serving in our cafe. Thanks to everyone for your patience and continued support. Sunday, June 26, we will be celebrating our awesome RCMI graduates. If you have graduated from high school or college, please contact Kanye Jones at 937-677-6161 or sign up after church so that we can celebrate your accomplishments the fourth Sunday in June. We are so proud of our graduates. We are also awarding scholarships to our graduating high school seniors. In order to be eligible, you must meet the following criteria. You must be a member of RCMI, serving or served in the ministry at RCMI, have a 2.5 and above GPA, copy of college acceptance letter or training school, complete a 250 word essay on what are your career goals and what are some steps you are taking to achieve these goals. The information must be turned into the church office by Wednesday, June 22nd. No late admissions will be accepted. There are several ways to give. If you would like to give by Cash App, use the Cash App name dollar sign R-E-V-C-E-N-M-I-N. You can also use your credit cards to swipe, but you do not need to write your numbers on the envelopes. The finance team will be available before and after services to pay your giving using your credit cards. You still can give online as well. And thank you for your continued financial support for the ministry. Today is the celebration of Juneteenth and we leave you with this short video clip on why it's celebrated. Open a U.S. history book, and chances are its author will quickly point out January 1st, 1863, the date President Abraham Lincoln, with one proclamation, orders and declares that all persons held as slaves shall be free. What that same history book might fail to mention is what happened to these birds once they arrived on the shores of Galveston, Texas, more than two years after Lincoln wrote them. In the 1860s, word didn't travel like it did now. And in 1865, months after General Robert E. Lee's surrender, word of the end of the Civil War had yet to hit the Southern state and its quarter of a million slaves. And then came General Gordon Granger's arrival in Galveston, June 19, 1865 and General Order Number 3, all slaves are free. Juneteenth was born. While Juneteenth celebrations continued to varying degrees in the U.S. for decades, it would take until 1980 for Texas to become the first state to declare it a holiday. Today, 47 states recognize it and the District of Columbia, a chapter of our history for far too long left out of the books designed to document it, but no longer. Juneteenth, or as the National Museum of African American History and Culture now calls it, our country's second Independence Day. <laughs>